And good evening, wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is for you. I am happy to welcome you in this uh, Technology Forum webinar on virtual reality. Next. I am Jacqueline Surug. I am chairing the FIP Technology Forum, and I am a hospital pharmacist in the France, in the hospital of the city of Niort. And I will be uh, chairing and co-moderating this webinar together with my friend, Eva Tirasalmi. Eva is a community pharmacist. She owns her own pharmacy in Helsinki in Finland. Next. So first, some announcements. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and live streamed via YouTube. Uh, the recording will be available on our website after the session. You may ask questions and we encourage you to do so using the question box which is provided. Uh, you are welcome to provide feedback after the webinar session to webinars Dot, uh, at FIP.org. This is important for us to improve our forthcoming webinars. And you may consider to become a member of FIP and join us if you are not yet a member. And this is the link where you can do so. Next. So uh, the technique Technology Forum, which is organized in this webinar, is a forum which is comprised of pharmacists, pharmaceutical scientists, and pharmacy educators, all with, with expertise, experience, and interests in technology. Uh, in this uh, forum, we uh, discuss uh, technological trends and their potential impact on pharmacy. Uh, we uh, provide guidance when we can on, uh, on technology matters. Um, we consider digital trends, but also uh, Amazonification of pharmacy. This is a topic of a, a forthcoming webinar organized with the community pharmacy section, and also medical devices and mobile health. And of course, we are discussing the explosion of technological advances how they are reshaping the future of healthcare. In the next uh, slide, I extend a little more on virtual reality. Uh, virtual reality has already numerous medical applications and also in pharmacy, from drug design, discovery, pharmacist education, inpatient counseling and behavior modification. It has become increasingly uh, affordable, flexible, and portable. It enables its use for therapeutic purposes, both in inpatient and outpatient environment. And uh, of course, there are still a number of challenges to this technology, such as validation of clinical efficacy, uh, cost, accessibility, and usability issues, technical capabilities accent and acceptance among others. So this is why it's important that pharmacists should stay up to date to, with these latest technologies. So in this slide, I just uh, uh, present the today's program. Uh, you will uh, be presented two experiences. The first experience is in immersive virtual reality in a virtual environment. This is the experience of uh, Helsinki University and its experience from Finland then. And the second experience is also an immer immersive virtual reality, but in a real environment, a hospital environment. And this is an experience from, from France. Then we will have a panel discussion with a Q&A session and a wrap up and conclusions. So it's my pleasure now to turn to Eva, who will present the first speaker. Eva, up to you. Thank you, Jacqueline. It's my pleasure today to present to you our first speaker, 
uh, vice dean from Helsinki University in the academic affairs, Mia Siben, who acts as an adjunct professor in industrial pharmacy at Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Helsinki. Her research aims to identify and overcome the challenges related to dosage forms in specific patient populations, such as the pediatrics or the elderly. She is active in pedagogical research in the higher education context, in where her specific interests are virtual learning environments and other digital solutions in teaching. Mia Siven is also a member of the University of Helsinki Teachers Academy. So I'm sure we will have a very interesting presentation today and a, with Mia's uh, last ex uh, vast experiences with the, with the uh, development of this uh, pedagogical part. So the floor is yours, Mia, please. In this presentation, you will hear about immersive virtual reality in a virtual environment. My name is Mia Siven. I'm the Vice Dean of Academic Affairs at Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Helsinki. At the moment, teaching laboratory skills undergoes revolution. The special characteristics of laboratory sciences, such as pharmacy or biosciences, are laboratory courses. There, the students are familiarized with laboratory work techniques in an authentic environment using real laboratory tools and real equipment. At the same time, the teacher has often very limited possibilities to provide individual feedback and a real-time guidance to the student who is working in the laboratory. Teaching and learning approaches, they have shifted from teacher-centered to student-centered, and we will and wish to support profound learning and very valuable learning experience. In our degree programs, we think that digital and virtual learning platforms in their various forms could offer a new avenue of teaching laboratory procedures and support students in learning. What is virtual reality, abbreviated as VR? Virtual reality is an immersive experience and its interaction in a virtual space. Use of these immersive technologies, just as VR or augmented reality, abbreviated as AR, they have generated new possibilities to enhance skills of students, as well as the way in which they learn. VR offers an immersive experience and interaction in three-dimensional virtual environment. Student using VR equipment is able to look around in the artificial world, move around in the virtual space and interact with its virtual items. The three-dimensional virtual effect is created with a VR headset, which provides visual and auditory feedback. And motion controllers enable the interaction with objects and movement in the virtual space. We at the Faculty of Pharmacy have developed uh, in our Digital Leap project VR learning environments. VR learning environments for pharmaceutical clean room and working in a laminar pro cabinet. In our VR environments, uh, the student using VR equipment is able to look around in the space and move in the uh, 3D modeled space. So they will have the possibility uh, to get familiarized with clean room and its entering facilities. Moreover, the students have a possibility to rehearse working procedures while interacting with the 3D virtual objects, needles, syringes, etc. 
so the student in this VR learning environment is able to rehearse aseptic working procedure in a laminar flow cabinet. Filling of syringes via lower lock connection. Virtual reality, it transforms the way educational content is delivered to the student. It uh, provides opportunity to learn by doing, rather than passively reading or watching non-interactive videos. The interaction plays an important role in learner engagement and motivation, and also the other gamifying elements, such as chasing points. The timely feedback and captivating experience, they are superlative to learning and knowledge retention. VR environment is able to provide timely feedback to the student. And visualization makes it easier to comprehend new information. It can be said that VR education is a valuable tool for different types of learners, such as visual learners and those who learn by doing. And VR education is also valuable in many educational fields for degree programs, for employee training and for continuing education. And in addition, it is fun. Here in uh, the left hand side, uh, you can see figures in where the students first make right choices, carry out the procedures and has feedback. I think it is time to look at the we are learning environment. In the Digital Leap uh, project, we have uh, generated a VR environment for rehearsing aseptic working procedures in laminar flow cabinet. This VR education, it refers to concept learning by doing. The student is working in the VR environment and at the same time, the student gets timely interaction and feedback uh, from the VR environment, whether uh, the student makes right choices or wrong choices. This timely interaction is supportive to motivation and knowledge retention. Also, the gamifying elements, audio feedback, gathering points, they are supportive to learner engagement. When the student makes right choices, he or she will get points. The virtual environment will be giving uh, instant feedback to the student. The student is able to interact with the 3D modeled objects. Now taking medicine to a large syringe, detaching the needle, putting it to the sharps, getting points out of that, then attaching a lower lock connection to the syringe, and then filling in the smaller syringe via the lower lock connection. So the student can rehearse these working procedures in a VR environment in a safe way. And it is important the student can rehearse these procedures as many times as it is needed. What kind of a feedback we have had from the students? from this virtual reality and this working in a VR environment. Virtual reality has the advantage that it can provide a first-hand experience and it enables learning by doing. Uh, especially, it is good in practicing workflows. A student said, the pharmacy VR is sufficiently realistic and allows you to do quite detailed things. After the VR game, I understood how to be more careful with tools, how to put things into order and be clean, and all this is not visible in a video. For example, in the VR game, syringe size checking and selecting correct one is important. This is something you cannot do while watching a video. 
Also working in the virtual space, uh, it gives immersive special experience. Students have said that the VR is surprisingly quite accurate regarding movement and physical objects. And also they say that it is fun. Using the VR education uh, to the study program uh, provides a good a way to take account sustainability, resources, and environmental health and safety issues. Uh, the students acknowledge that, okay, the best would be learned by doing in the real world, but economically it is expensive, you need equipment, and it takes a lot of time if you have many students, such as it is the situation for pharmacy degree programs usually. So uh, the virtual reality is way better than watching a video. First, you learn and remember better because you do the thing. And secondly, the students say it is boring to watch videos. So first had experience uh, enables learning by doing, uh, taking into account sustainability, resources and uh, environmental health and safety issues. But virtual reality also has some drawbacks. Uh, it has uh, at the moment limitations of haptic feedback and it has limitations in practicing fine motor skills. One student said that I was constantly dropping the syringe and other items. I would have needed more rehearsal on using the controllers. Also, uh, some discomfort is possible, even so-called cyber sickness. Uh, the usual comments are the headset is rather heavy or my sight got blurred. Then uh, how about creating uh, the realistic view for this virtual reality learning environments? Here is some developer's perspective. These uh, realistic views, they can be created uh, in a two way. As 360 degree panoramas, shot with 360 degree camera, or they can be created computationally by 3D modeling. Here you can see uh, two uh, environments in the left hand side, uh, a 360 degree panorama, and then uh, a 3D modeled environment. These panoramas uh, showcase a very complex skin areas that would be very time consuming and expensive to create by 3D modeling. But uh, the advantage of 3D modeling is that animated 3D models, actually they provide more realistic interactions, if interactions are needed in the game, than uh, compared to 360 degree shot objects. A couple of words about the interaction with the objects. Uh, immersion in the virtual environment is more profound if one is able to interact with the objects. And this means that you have to have animated 3D objects. And if uh, the environment also provides audio. Other gamifying elements, voice responses and chasing points, they also increase in engagement. These animated 3D models, as shown in the figure, they provide realistic experience. For example, uh, the movement of piston and fluid uh, when the student is filling a syringe. But as these features are animated 3D modeled, some features may be simplified or may need, need to be simplified for visual clarity. For example, unpacking sterilization pouches. Uh, is difficult to 3D model, so the information can be given as text. Then what about the educator's perspective? Some thoughts about this. It is sort of so that VR education, it can support learning of process flows. The procedures, they can be practiced as many times as you wish. 
uh, the VR environment can be utilized as rehearsal before real life situations, for demonstrating skills or training safety, for updating knowledge, and etc. So, very various applications are possible. As an immersive experience, VR education may leave a stronger imprint compared to regular assignments or, for example, watching a video. But on the other hand, you have to remember that the technology is rather new, and the new use of new technology can lead to too many stimuli. So this is called as cognitive overload. So pedagogical research is still needed on the ability of VR environments to really enhance deep learning. We have this kind of a uh, pedagogical research ongoing at the moment at the faculty. It is sure that VR education, it saves supplies and increases safety. Environmental sustainability as well as consumption of materials or human resources are well taken into account. This is a positive uh, aspect from the side of educators. But there are also some common concerns, and they are related usually to the accessibility of the VR technology, either to the educators or to the students. To the educators, uh, the development of this kind of environments is uh, at the moment uh, quite expensive, especially if uh, the environments are 3D modeled. Also, the software requires upgrades and hardware becomes updated rather quickly. Uh, the limitations to the students uh, are that uh, the equipment uh, should be accessible to the students at campus. We think that the student must not be required to have one at home. Even though many uh, students, uh, they play games, and they might have uh, VR facilities at home, but at the moment we cannot require them. Some final remarks. We would say, let's enter the digital classrooms. All these digital and virtual learning platforms in their various forms, they transform the way educational contents are delivered to the students. The virtual learning platforms, they've generated new possibilities to enhance skills of students as well as the way in which they learn. Students, they benefit from blended learning methods and new type of audiovisual platforms in where the timely feedback and digital interaction plays a crucial role in learning. In the figure, Second year pharmacy students are testing interactive augmented reality smart classes in laboratory course at Faculty of Pharmacy. Digitality enables training, also virtual training, and also in environments that may not be easily accessible in the real world. At the same time, environmental health and safety, as well as resources, can be taken into account. At the end, I would like to thank all of our associates that have made all this possible. Digital Leap in Pharmacy project during the years 2019 and 2020. Our collaborators in software development. Coding was done in Unity together with Computer Science at University of Helsinki and Center for Information Technology. 3D animation and visualization was done in collaboration with Metropolia University of Applied Sciences. Our collaborator in science was Helsinki Hospital of Pharmacy. Collaborator in pedagogical research, Center for University Teaching and Learning. If you are interested uh, to hear more about virtual reality and augmented reality and their applications in education, you can also visit uh, the link that is given in this slide. With this presentation, I hope that you are as inspired with the new technology and the virtual reality in teaching and in higher education as we are.
Thank you very much, Mia, for this very inspiring and very interesting presentation. I know that we have already some questions in the Q&A box, but I will turn now to the next presenters. Um, and I would like to introduce uh, Agnès Bobé Madik. Agnès is a hospital pharmacist. She's working in uh, uh, Lisieux uh, Hospital in uh, Normandy in France. Agnès, you are also the president of ADIF. ADIF is, a, is an association for uh, digital and, uh, and computerization in pharmacy, uh, which offers a, a forum discussions uh, for uh, some uh, 15,000 uh, pharmacists for more than 20 years. And this association under your governance, Agnès, uh, recently uh, invest, well, recently, that was in 2016, in try to invest in, a, in a digital simulation in a real environment. And uh, this is what you're going to present now. And uh, I would like also to introduce your intern, Paul Bestnier. Paul, I know that you have been very instrumental in this development. So we listen both to both of you. Thank you. And yes, you are muted. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's the first time for me. Excuse That's me. Okay. That's okay. okay. Good morning and good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Agnès Bobemadic. I'm a pharmacist in France and I'm the president of ADIF, the Association for Digital and Information in Pharmacy. My co panelist is Paul Beignet, who is a pharmacy intern. And he also comes from France, and we are proud together to present you the experience from France in this showcase. Like the Finland and Mia, we use an immersive virtual reality, but the main difference is that we are in the real environment. So I will share my, my screen. Sorry for that. Yeah. Okay. Next. For introduction, I will tell you quickly about the reason why we use immersive virtual reality in Earth. The first reason is because digital is everywhere. So it strengthens the attractiveness of the tool. Then in simplify the implementation of the tool and improve accessibility, technical, temporal, geographical, and financial. Digital, digital participate also in the transformation of education. And finally, it facilitates interfacing with course platform to follow up the learners in initial and continuous education. So I give you uh, the speak for Paul Beignet. <laughs> How to make a uh, simulation. Uh, a lot of people use computer generated images like the presentation made before us. You have very good results, but uh, as Mia say, is expensive and it's more difficult to, to develop. The idea of the concept of 360 degrees Immersive reality uh, tool is based on the concept of Google Street View with real images. This solution uh, has some advantages. It's simple, it only requires an internet connection and a smartphone, smartphone, a computer, laptop, or a tablet. Another big advantage is uh, compatibility with virtual reality. Uh, 
and allow us to trigger the, the novelty uh, novelty effect and also what we can call the wow the wow effect for our training we do not use the helmet to make the room of error we use uh, the classic method with uh, with computer and that's uh, how we made our serious game in a 360 environment environment so for for all these reasons the association adif has used uh, the concept of immersive virtual reality to create innovative 360 degrees immersive tools for training of health professional on health products. These tools are usable face-to-face -face and are also accessible 24-7 with e-learning in our website. Paul, you're muted. <laughs> you're muted. <laughs> Thanks. The serious game, yes, from 360 degrees, is based on the concept of rooms of errors, a simulation tool born in Canada in 2006 and introduced in France in 2012. The room of error presented here allows the learners to walk around a real fake care unit with corridor treatment room and also uh, patient's room. It can observe the environment in uh, 360 degrees and click on flashing point of interest. This opens photos and videos where there may, they may be errors. The target audience of this tool is professional involved in, the, in drug, uh, drug management. The learner must find 18 errors about medication workflow, like, uh, like drug storage or uh, prescription. And all of these errors are educational, probable, easy to stage, common, serious, and as much as we can, uh, universal. So the better we can do now, it's uh, show you uh, the, the serious game. And I will share my screen. Uh, just wait a moment. Yes. So, so if you go on, uh, on our website, um, you can do this, uh, this free serious game. Uh, Paul, it's you. Uh, let's move to the demonstration of our serious game. I'm going to skip the introduction. As we can see, we are lack in a 360 degrees bubble where you can move around and see the ceiling. You can also see the floor. Now we are in the corridor of the care unit. Here, here's a nurse. And in the other side, here, the doctors. We can click on flashing point, uh, flashing point of interest, and the flashing points are things to be investigated. So let's go on the medical computer. Uh, what information do we have if we click on medical records? Okay, we see past medical history and risk factor. Um, of uh, Mr. Le Conquerant. Okay, and if we now click on the computerized prescription, we can zoom in to, to find some information. If I zoom in, I can see that this patient is, okay, he got he gets insulin. He, Mr. Le Conquerant must be diabetic. Okay, uh, we can go now to see what the nurse the nurse is doing okay the nurse is preparing infusion bag for mr le conquerant um, 
I don't find any errors here. I'm zooming, but uh, nothing here. And here on the drawer, here the, the medication prepare for Mr. Le Conquérant. I'm going to, to zoom in and see, we can see the batch number. We can see the expiration date. Uh, I will check later if this medication prepared are the same as, uh, as prescribed uh, using the computerized prescription. Uh, now we can go to the treatment, treatment room. We can still go 360 and, and see what's here. Okay. And the pharmacist. Um, by Clicking on the refrigerator, I see the storage. Storage of medication, okay, okay, there is medication. And what's in the bottom? Oh, the, there is food. I see food in the bottom, in the bottom of the refrigerator. Okay, it's, it's forbidden to, to have uh, food in medical uh, refrigerator. Uh, I found my first error. I'm going to, to fill in uh, the error form. I'm uh, going to put my email address, my institution function. And I can now fill in this form and go to treatment room and refrigerator. Is it okay, refrigerator? So now I can say food in the refrigerator. Okay, I found my first uh, first error. Uh, now I can I can go to 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 the medicine cabinet, in the trolley, and what in the, the drawer? <laughs> everything looks the same. Okay, everything is blue. And what's here? In the box there is cefazolin. Oh, and there are also cefotaxin. It's uh, it's our second uh, second mistake. I'm going to to fill the uh, fill the form. Okay. Bench no. Treatment trolley. Uh, so cefotaxim and cefazolin. Cefotaxim is not in the right box. Okay, our second error. And now I can move to, to see the, the patient room. Okay, the patient is sleeping. Uh, what, uh, what is in the drawer of the patient? What do we have here? Um, there is insulin. Okay, it confirmed that um, that the patient is is diabetic. Okay, and what on his arm? What on his arm? The patient. Okay, uh, one patch of nicotine. He must be a smoker, but uh, but why did they cut they cut the patch? You, you can't cut a patch. It's it's our uh, third uh, third error. I'm going to to fill in uh, another time and. Uh, they uh, say it's our third error. Uh, patient room, patient room, okay. And the patch of nicotine is cut. Okay. Uh, my purpose here is not to, to go through 18 errors, it's just to, to show you some, some example. And um, now we can we can go to to the correction of these tools. The correction of the room of error, just by clicking corrected room. Can keep okay. Uh, as you can see, is the same rules same room as before, um, and for every error you have a red flashing point with the correction of the, the error. Uh, for example, we can, go, we can go back to the patient room and, uh, and see uh, what is written for, for the patch. 
there is uh, the red dot. In the patch. Okay, nicotine patch, I'll be prescribed. It's prescribed. Okay, it's strongly recommended not to cut a patch. It confirms that there is an error here. Now let's go back to, to our slides. Thank you, Paul. And um, so um, we have now almost five years of experience. Uh, just, yes. Okay, and um, uh, we see the users uh, appropriating our tools so we can observe different ways of using the serious game. Indeed, the tools have been designed to be as flexible as possible in order to match the different formats used by health and training establishments for initial and continuing education. The first possibility is in e-learning because it's easily accessible. The main disadvantage is that the debriefing is with little interest because there is no trainer, no interaction with a group of learners. It is better, you know, with a trainer because it allows a briefing and a debriefing after the game. Should it be simulation alone or binomial? Or should it be work group simulation? A small group encourages and directions, but we have also the experience with group of 200 people in face-to-face. -face. And we can imagine that there is no limit to the number of participants during a webinar, like for, for example, like this one. With a trainer, it is also possible to do the serious game with simulation and debriefing at the same time for shorter sessions. The duration of a session is approximately two hours. So like Mia in Finland, the question we can ask now is, what are the results on learners' knowledge? To answer this question, we organize a pre-training test with 10 simple questions before doing the serious game. At the end of the session, we check with a post-training test the impact on learners' knowledge. As you can see on this graph, the knowledge of the students has increased dramatically for almost all the questions. Uh, let's see further development we have given to this concept on immersive reality in real environments. We developed three categories of tool. The first one is uh, Yatromel 360 degrees. Uh, it's the tool uh, that we uh, presented just before. We also uh, made uh, Simudem about medical devices and Simupac about the preparation of injectables chemotherapies. For each tool, the target audience can be different. For some of them, it's pharmacy assistant. For others, it's pharmacist. Also for nurse, doctor, anesthetist, or students in uh, every field I just, uh, I just said. Now, let's focus Let's focus on Yatromed 360 degrees. Uh, the target audience is any professional involved in a medication uh, workflow. And the first declination of this tool uh, is uh, Yatromed 360, medicine, surgery, and obstetric. This tool was um, the tool we just present to you. The first version was made in uh, 2016. The second declination is uh, Yatromed 360, um, but this time about oncology. This serious game focused uh, on the oncological management of an inpatient. 
The third one um, is used to train professionals on medication reconciliation. Another one, um, the fourth declination of Yatomed was use, uh, use a new 360 bubble and focus on medication in neonatology units. And the fifth declination, uh, which is currently in the development, um, will have as subject uh, medicational treatment in uh, operating theater. Let's move now to CIMUDM. CIMUDM, the aim of this tool is to train on medical devices. And the target audience is any professional who use uh, medical devices. So it's more for, for nurse. Nurses, for example. For the, the first explanation of uh, CIMUDM is uh, the room of error allow us to, to learn about the proper use uh, of medical devices. It's good use in global way. Therefore, it's, uh, it's, little, less, uh, it's little less specific. The second one, CIMUDM, uh, uh, is for nurse who, and also doctor, who do um, urinary ca catheterization. Now about CIMUPAC. CIMUPAC focuses on drug compounding in cytotoxic reconstitution units. We made, um, we made uh, the first tool. The first one um, offers several uh, levels of difficulty, which are total about 60 errors in different areas. Each version contains 15 errors. A second version is, uh, is actually in the, in the development. We also made um, a bonus version for anyone who wants to learn more about chemotherapy preparation, it's, uh, it's a room this time without errors. It's possible to work, to work between different areas, you know, dressing lock, production areas, and also inside an isolator. It may be good, for example, for, for patients who are under chemotherapy. So we have now four years in sight, and you can see our connection statistics on this graph. Since, uh, since the beginning, almost 20,000 connections on all the tools. Yatromed, uh, the first serious game put in line, is the best known and most used. So with the display of all the prices we have got so far, I will thank Jacqueline Surug for her help in the translation of Yatromed 360s and for an, her invitation to this event. Thank you. Thank you for all, Jacqueline. And, um, and so we hope uh, you enjoyed this presentation. And we will thank you for your attention. We will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Agnès, and thank you, uh, Paul, for this uh, very uh, illustrative and, uh, and uh, interesting presentation. It's true that uh, uh, it's, um, it's very fa famous, let us say, in France, in the hospital world, and uh, many hospitals have already experienced this in, uh, in their settings. So thank you so much. Um, and um, I will uh, turn to Eva for the questions. Thank you, Jacqueline. And I invite all our uh, speakers to, to answer the questions. We have two questions in the Q&A box. And I think although they were originally sent to me, uh, they, they are questions which are uh, interesting to hear. Uh, opinions from both speakers or, or both groups of speakers. So if we go through them first. So the first question is that they, did you do a study to check if students do less errors in the lab uh, after conducting the, the simulation? So is this really something which they can bring into the reality? And they, or is it possible to, to measure it? 
And the other question uh, is that they, uh, can this uh, virtual reality learning environment help students to overcome mental health needs, which they can get from a classroom training? So this is more about the social connections and et cetera. So are we really all moving into the virtual reality and what are the good sides and what are the not that good sides of this? So if I, we can, I can ask Mia first to answer to these questions and then uh, the French group, is that possible? Or, thank you. So please Mia and then Agnes. Thank you, and it's nice to see all of you in here listening to our presentations. Uh, we are very inspired and, and we hope that you are also, I think so. Uh, thank you for the questions uh, regarding the first question, uh, uh, whether the students are more, uh, uh, whether they learn better and whether they make uh, less mistakes uh, if they uh, first rehearse the procedures in VR. Uh, actually, we have been carrying out uh, the pedagogical research on this, and it seems really so that uh, when the students, uh, they have the possibility to rehearse in advance before going to the uh, to the aseptic uh, room, uh, then uh, they really, they make uh, less mistakes. So VR is very good in rehearsing uh, the procedures and the workflows. Uh, of course, the fine model skills, uh, it is not so good in rehearsing the fine model skills, but uh, training the uh, working procedures, as well as Paul and, and Agnes also stated that uh, this uh, pre-rehearsal is advantageous. Then regards uh, that uh, can we go really uh, all virtual and uh, do the students also uh, need to meet uh, the teachers and uh, need to meet uh, their uh, peers in the lab rooms. Uh, well, uh, the uh, VR environment, uh, it is good in that way that it can really support the, the student uh, in their learning by giving a feedback uh, in a timely way in the right uh, phases of the work, the VR is giving the feedback and that supports uh, the student in learning. And we know that uh, the timely feedback is uh, one, one important thing in that. But of course, uh, uh, there are also other things that you have to learn in, in the laboratory. You cannot go fully virtual. In the laboratory, you have to rehearse uh, teamwork, for example. So it's very important that we also have uh, for the students uh, the possibility to go to the laboratory uh, courses, uh, live laboratory courses, and then uh, to interact with the students and to interact with the teacher. Uh, many times uh, in the degree programs in pharmacy, the, the problem is that we have very big uh, course size. So there is a lots of students and very few uh, teachers available. So in this respect, uh, the interactive digitalization is a good thing, but uh, we have to remember that we need the hands-on training and we need the training in dream, uh, uh, team work as well. Thank you, Mia. And we'll continue with Agnes and Paul. What are your thoughts on this issue? Um, it was um, if the students do less error with, um, after conducting these VR simulations, okay. Um, yes. We kind of answer this question with uh, the pre-training and the post-training um, question. And we find that uh, using uh, this tool, um, uh, learners will, uh, will do less, uh, less error and uh, are able to, to, answer, um, to answer the question um, more in the in the better way and i also going to talk about uh, urinary catheterization it's a tool made for for nurse and doctor in the in care units and uh, we we use this this, uh, this tool to to remind uh, to remind them uh, every good practices on uh, urinary catheterization and with this tool, for example, uh, with specific tools, uh, we for personal personal uh, health people tell us that uh, they they can now do it uh, with a better way, for example. 
Thank you. And I can, um, yes, I, I can uh, complete uh, with the um, neonatology uh, series game. Uh, we we did an audit, an audit an audit of practice, and uh, we are measuring uh, the number of declaration of uh, adverse events in the in the unit, and we are going this uh, this two D. So I cannot uh, um, tell you the the results, but. Uh, we hope that um, the adverse effect uh, will uh, uh, decrease. And um, in the satisfaction survey, uh, we, we ask people if people think um, they will be, be more attentive for, uh, to certain errors. And uh, we, the, the, the answer that uh, they will. So we hope so that uh, the, um, the knowledge will increase and then um, they will be more attentive in the in their units. Thank you. So I, uh, I, I think the time is running and uh, this is a really interesting area. I hope we can organize some more webinars in the future to continue this collaboration and discussions about these uh, uh, achievements because it seems to be an effective way of learning. And uh, are there any questions from the audience? You want to, uh, you can write them in the QA box. And uh, uh, there are there are several now. And uh, um, the one question um, is that they about the future of this say uh, this uh, form of education. Uh, and I think Mia already answered in a way that they, you can use it in a specific ways, but not for everything. And uh, the other question is about the availability. How do our colleagues, uh, are they able to, to, to get these videos on this, their usage or this we are learning uh, how, how public this is? Can you comment on, on these two things? And then I think we have to uh, discuss in a... a in, in, in the next webinar, more about these issues. If you can, Mia, uh, start. Yeah, at the moment, this VR environment, uh, uh, you cannot play that over the internet. So at the moment, un unfortunately, it is only for the students at the campus. Uh, but we have also made these 360 degree uh, uh, panoramas which are more accessible by uh, over the internet so um, there might be some limitations with the VR environment but in the future I would see a great potential especially in these 360 degree materials as Agnes and Paul presented us. Okay thank you. And Paul and Agnes? Yes and for us you, you can everybody can it's total free there is uh, three uh, serious games. Uh, they are uh, free. So the, these one, these uh, we'll show you, we, we have shown you. And um, uh, the other is um, uh, Simupak with the um, public. And the other one is Neonatology. So, but it's in French. Uh, the, the, the serious game we have shown you is, um, is free, access free in the, our website. Paul, do you want to complete? Yeah. And it's the first uh, tool we, we made in, uh, in English languages. We use uh, French photography and French video. And with the help of uh, Jacqueline, uh, we translate uh, every, every error, we, every photos, every videos to, to use uh, this tool uh, abroad. I guess hey, you can have you. to make some more translations, yes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would have yes. a, a, a question to you. Um, this is a real serious game. This is very, very interesting. But my question is, uh, um, how difficult is it to uh, develop such a serious game? And uh, what's the cost of it? How expensive is it? Paul, you you can this answer. is also for Mia, because I have the same questions for Mia. Okay. <laughs> uh, for our tool, um, we, we, a tool costs about uh, six to eight, uh, 8,000 uh, euros, but not including volunteer time. 
and, uh, and pain participation of uh, health professionals. Uh, ADIF is a non-profit uh, association and uh, with a lot of pharmacists uh, and also doctors that uh, help us in the development of, uh, in the development of uh, our tools. And for a tool, we, the time of development depends, it, it varies between six months and, uh, and one year. But for example, for the first tool made in only three months, the, the, tool, uh, the tool was made. Okay, but for instance, I see we have a great audience from Philippines here. Imagine I am from Philippines and I would like to send you my, my pictures in my pharmacy or in my operating theater. Would you be able to put that together in a, this such a serious game? Yeah, it's, it's, totally, it's, it's totally possible. Um, now we are developing a, a new tool uh, that allow um, anyone who wants to make simulation in 360 environment, real environment, to use uh, their own images, their own photos um, of, um, of the care unit, of uh, a classroom, of every, everything they want, and to make their own uh, scenario. scenario of, uh, and it's, it's, really, it's really large. Yes, but they, they must use our bubbles. The bubbles is uh, with, a, with a camera, a specific camera, and then, uh, but the, 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 the photo or the video behind the, the, the flashing points can be changed um, um, by uh, someone who wants uh, to do it. Yeah, we have to choose the yes. mistakes we want to, to put in the, in the game. Yes, yeah. it will be possible with, the, with the, the, the tool we are developing now. So this is very powerful. When will your tool be ready? Um, maybe <laughs> uh, next year. Next year, I think. Okay. Yes, I, I will say um, at the end of this year, but um, okay, still it, it will be maybe uh, not possible. Last year, uh, next year, I, I think it uh, it will be uh, okay. Okay, and and Mia. <laughs> Oh yes, uh, uh, regards the costs. Uh, if we uh, need to buy this kind of a we are uh, software, uh, that is expensive. But in our case, uh, actually, we did have to invest into the computers and the VR headsets. So it is uh, approximately uh, two thousand euros that you have to um, uh, invest into the hardware. But uh, then uh, making this software, this VR environment and this uh, 3D coded uh, environment, we made it in collaboration with the University of Helsinki and Metropolia uh, University of Applied Sciences. So actually uh, it was uh, human work. It was our students uh, that we collaborated with and the uh, software development, uh, the coders uh, made, the students made uh, the platform for us. So uh, uh, in that case, it was an academic collaboration that we, we made in this. But if you code uh, software sh sh uh, shop and, and would like to buy this kind of a thing, it is uh, 20,000 or even more euros that uh, you will have to invest. So uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, you collaborate with uh, software developers in this. Thank you, Mia. So I think we have a some couple of questions yet, uh, Eva. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, there are a lot of questions, in fact, and they and I think it's a, but many of these are concerns. They say free to access, etc. And I really think that they, uh, the the presenter, the presenters can also answer, type an answer to some of these questions. There is, for example, they say, as a pharma student from India, I'd like to ask about the different softwares, such as the Chem Actions to study drug interactions, work on the principle of of a we are. And I think this is a specific question where I hope that the presenters can type the answer, and you will see it then later on if not during this, uh, this webinar. And uh, James Hall has uh, sent a, a specific comment for Paul. And, uh, and uh, so please, Paul, look at this uh, then. 
but due to the time constraints, I, I think what we can think here is that we've got now a, a very good a view on the possibilities of a we are in a in a learning. And a, uh, is it possible, Jacqueline? Do you think that, for example, hospital pharmacy section or community pharmacy section inside FIP could organize this kind of a webinars just to use these tools? so that people can study inside FIP? Oh, it could be possible then. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a new development for Agnes and Paul, but I think it is possible, yeah. But I don't want yeah. to give the answer instead of them. Well, yeah, I understand that, but I just think that, do you think FIP could uh, be the, 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 the platform? You need the resources to do that. So I think uh, yeah. it, it is a further development, which is a, uh, it's an offer to you, Agnes and Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and to Mia. <laughs> and to Mia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, is there another question we could answer just now? Um, there, there is an answer. There is a question from uh, Muhammad. He, he asked, how accessible are these VR? to others outside your institution? I think this has been partly answered. Yes. Would you add, to, would you add something? Yes. Mia, Agnes, yes, Paul? Please, go on, go ahead. For uh, Agnes. Go, Paul. <laughs> For Aritula, as Agnes said before, uh, you can uh, you can access to uh, to this VR uh, just by going to to our website uh, adif a d i p h dot org o r g and uh, you can find our um, simulation tool and um, the tool we just present to you the full version um, the full English version. It's, uh, it's, it can, can be used uh, for free uh, on our website. So for this one, okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's accessible outside of any institution. Yes, uh, and you needn't, um, like Paul said, uh, you needn't a VR uh, headset. It's, it's wow effect, but it's not necessary to do the game. Okay, that's great. And uh, of course, we have these language problems that and barriers always. That they, but but in the world you have uh, many people who are French speaking, so that's not so big issue. Then, for example, for our Finnish, which is spoken by roughly maximum six million people, and and uh, if we do something in Finnish, it's uh, it's a uh, not so easy to to uh, get in into that, or we have to make some translations. So, how do you mean? I think these translations could be organized. Uh, if you think about these uh, 3D modeled objects, uh, you can make the language versions in them, uh, but uh, it is then done through the coding. But uh, regards these 360 degree materials, in there it is much more easier to make uh, these uh, transcripts also in other languages. And of course, uh, if your degree program, uh, it depends on your degree program, it might be that uh, already you would like to make them, for example, in, in English and in, in, in French. Thank uh, you. There is another question here that mm. I see from Raquel. Raquel, or I'm not sure of the pronunciation. When there are errors that you have observed, what are the process you are doing to correct all these errors? So this is for Agnes and Paul and Mia as well. Who wants to answer? <laughs> I, I was reading uh, the, the question of uh, James Hall, so I didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't listen what you, you said. Uh, the question okay. is, what are the processes to correct the errors? How do you help learning? When, mm. when you see that the, the, the student has made an, well, the student or uh, has made an error in, uh, in, uh, in manipulating the, the software, well, I mean, in finding the mistakes or so, so on, then how do you correct it? How do you tell him, um, what uh. do you do? 
we our tool allows to to do it uh, in different ways um, we can uh, we can for example um, use only one computer and go with a student uh, with a group of students and uh, show them uh, if we go there do you think there is a mistake or there is an, an error and we can uh, debrief um, one error at the time uh, so it's it's a it's a first uh, it's a first mode and um, there also um, there also the students who fill in the form and we debrief every mistake and we can uh, we can see all the statistics and uh, and show uh, if uh, if all the group is uh, is good with this kind of error uh, is this this uh, error is too difficult so we can uh, we can uh, focus on uh, on the correction of uh, of some errors. Thank you. And uh, Mia, while you are answering to this question, I will say that they, there is a specific question to you from James Paul in the QA. And I think you can possibly type an answer to this if you, if you can. Is it okay? Yes, I will try to find the question and, and type the answer. Yes, I will do that. And then regards the previous question on how we uh, react when we notice that the student makes mistakes. And actually, in the VR game, in our case, uh, uh, the student uh, gathers points, gets points. And as uh, you saw in one of those videos, at the end of the game, the student will be having the points. And regards the points, uh, the student uh, has the immediate feedback, uh, what was done right and what was done wrong. And then uh, the student can then discuss with the teacher uh, detail by detail, which was done right in a right way. But also uh, during the game, there is uh, some of these um, uh, some of these spaces of the uh, procedures, they are critical. So during the game, the student also can have uh, instant feedback from the system that, uh, oops, you now uh, did a wrong choice. There is actually, there is voice responses in the, I didn't include them into the videos for clarity, but there is voice responses. When you do something right, it says, Bing! and when you do something wrong, it says, Burr. so <laughs> the student gets... Uh, uh, gets feedback at the same moment and you can also then have this text box in where uh, the right uh, the choice is given to the student. Yep. Thank you. So let's see what other issues here are. And they, uh, so how do you see in general that they, how quickly this virtual uh, world will will and, and training will spread across the, the globe or will it be something which only the developing developed part of the world is able to use and they uh, there is also another question which is that uh, is this mandatory so i understand that in in helsinki university it's part of the mandatory uh, studies but in the continuing education is it so that if you want to work in this field uh, you you have to pass these courses, or or is there some kind of other part of the specialization? So what is the role of these say these courses, and and how can they be used? This is also a question, possibly Agnes and and Paul or Mia. Would you like to to start? I can go if you want. Um, mm. I, I had, I had the, the chance to to do on the on the both side um, as a trainer and also as a student. Um, the tool was made in 2016, and back then I was a, I was a pharmacy student. And uh, in uh, one of our courses, uh, the ADIF and uh, one of the member of the ADIF was uh, coming to our school. And uh, we are the monetary uh, class, and uh, we we do the tool uh, in front of uh, in front of him. So um, it's it's now a little bit uh, um, in, it's we, we can do it in uh, our formation uh, in our initial initial formation every year. Uh, some people of the ADIF will come and do uh, do this tool to to classroom. And uh, for the nurse uh, with Adif, we we trained um, we trained some uh, 
some of the nurse, uh, nurse students, and it's also part of, uh, of their uh, initial formation. Okay. Yes, because you extended it for nurses and also medical doctors like anesthesiologists, I understood. And uh, maybe other specialty will come afterwards. And also it is helping for technicians. I see all the cytotoxic reconstitution units, uh, technicians usually, uh, well, they, they are very instrumental uh, in, in those units. So it helps a lot for technicians. Mia, sorry, you, sorry, Paul, you wanted to say something. No, just to say it's, it's uh, good for, for pharmacy assistants who don't really know who are introduced in the chemotherapy uh, units and don't really know how to do it. They, they can see it uh, a first time uh, before, before, doing it, before doing it. Great, yeah, this is very, very useful for them, absolutely. Mia, I think it's the same for you. Oh yes, yes, and I think that uh, this could be used more, uh, more used in uh, continuing education. For example, demonstrating skills before going to the real situation. You could demonstrate your skills that you can do these kind of uh, workflows uh, during, for example, this VR game or this uh, 360 degree VR environment. For sure. Mm. Yeah. And they, do you know any place where it could be obligatory, for example, to do your specialization in the hospital pharmacy or in a community pharmacy or in a, being a, a special pharmacist for a, for a uh, compounding or, or these kind of things? Is it, a, is it used anywhere as an obligatory part of the curriculum? Yes, I, I know that uh, in uh, so, some uh, some establishment uh, do this for a junior uh, uh, technical uh, persons. Uh, it's possible. Yes, um, the the difficulty is that um, the forms you fill um, is not uh, like Mia with a wrong or right uh, answer. You must uh, analyze your uh, the answer. To, to know if uh, the, the student is wrong or right. It takes time, mm. but it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the tutor can do that if you have a tutor in your specialization. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's good tool for that. Yeah. It could be extended maybe also for community pharmacists, as you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it could be very useful. For example, for the uh, they say um, medical a uh, um, or for the rational pharmacotherapy, all kind of a prescribing errors and this kind of thing. So this three hundred and sixty had one part of this a therapeutic outcomes management. So that could be very useful because nowadays all the pharmacists coming out from the university have to they they are able to do these kind of things but they to to really test whether they manage <laughs> it could be good and for the continuing education of those who are who are already in the pharmacy and never has passed these modern courses doing medicines management okay uh have we covered all the uh questions i think so uh, eva uh, we have one one a comment from pilar modamio uh, in spain in ah. spain we have a four year socialization for hospital specialization for hospital pharmacists but not for community pharmacists so this is just a comment on that they that they not about the the contents of the but they and then gladys says here that they um, vaccinations as another use case for community pharmacy would be so useful to have had we are as a refresher before started vaccinating and this is for sure truly true so something also for FIP to to think about that they could we produce this kind of we are 
continuing education in the in the vaccination field. This is a good message to bring forward. Absolutely. I leave it. I leave it to you, Jacqueline, to take it up to the uh, bureau level. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Um, yeah. There is a question here. If, uh, this is for Adif. This is for you, Agnès and Paul. How can we use Adif simulations in faculties of pharmacy abroad? Can we buy license of softwares? So this is a question. Can we buy license of softwares? In France or uh, where? Uh, abroad, abroad that uh, abroad. Okay. Um, in France, so um, we, you know, we are an association and then uh, we must be, uh, we must be adherent, no, adherent. A membership? A membership, a yes. Membership. To use yeah. um, the non-free the, the, uh, tools. Uh, but for the um, English, uh, which is free, you can use um, uh, in your pharmacy, if you want, um, in, in your faculty. Um, with the faculty, we make uh, conventions uh, to have a Broad, uh, to have a large um, use. Uh, Paul, you mean, can you... You mean uh, a contract? You mean a contract? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. A in contract. France. Okay. Yes. With... Um, yeah. uh, convention, c'est les congrès. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a contract, you meant a contract, yeah. Contract, okay. yes. So... I yeah. think uh, for for these um, for these room for these serious game they can use it. The better we can uh, hope that uh, the uh, we have a uh, we will have a, a return uh, a feedback feedback, a feedback. Yeah. yes for using it uh, uh, with a large uh, possibility and uh, uh, abroad is uh, is very. Uh, uh, Maybe very interesting, yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very informative session. Is there any simulation software can be used for OSCE? I'm not sure we can. What is this OSCE? Uh, I don't know. Well, difficult to answer all these questions. Uh, we have a look, uh, we have to look at the link which has been given by Yuri. Okay, uh, um, mm. Dr. Pravin Kumar, could you explain what is OSCE? Then we can answer your question. Objective Structured Clinical Examination. Ah, okay, this is something else then, yeah, I see. Yeah, it is Objective Structured Clinical Examination. That's more. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Do you know, Agnes or Paul? No. Is there any? any? No. Just in pharmacy. Okay. Yeah. We are pharmacists. So, yeah. we, interest, uh, we are yeah. interesting uh, about uh, medical, uh, medical uh, workflow or something like that, but not uh, uh, examination. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a further, further development for later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So reality simulation is an infinite uh, world of uh, possibility. <laughs> you yeah. can do all you want. Yeah. That's okay. great. I, I guess we are coming to the end. What do you think, Eva? Yes, I, I have the same feeling when I'm looking at the watch. But time is running. Yeah, time is running. Uh, is there some uh, final word, words for our presenters, our speakers? I think I, we just want to, to thank them from my side, at least. And yeah, I also yeah. want to thank you, Jacqueline. <laughs> and if they want to say something, so, so that's another issue. Yeah. This is what I was suggesting, if they want to have a final word, because before I thank them, Agnes, I see you are muted. Do you want to? 
<laughs> I'm not muted. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy. It's for the first experience for me and uh, I'm very, uh, very happy. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline, for the, is, this invitation. You're welcome, Agnès. Thank, Thank you for, for your welcome. Yeah, Paul, you are the new generation, Paul. <laughs> the future, yeah? You're carrying the project. Yeah. <laughs> Mia. Yeah, thank you for the kind invitation uh, for today. And, and it was a very nice uh, meeting and, and a great opportunity to tell you about uh, our experiences uh, because they so I enjoyed a lot and, and, and hope that you are also as inspired as we are. <laughs> you know, I think uh, this, this is really outstanding possibilities that offers virtual reality. And uh, I think everybody should be excited about, uh, about all this. Uh, what I have been, uh, uh, I noticed in your presentation, Mia, something that I think is so true. One of your students said, it was fun. And it is so nice to hear that because learning, getting knowledge when you are fun is the utmost. It's, it's so efficient to get knowledge when you are, you are fun altogether. And this is what this kind of possibility that uh, virtual reality offers. So it was so inspiring and informative to hear all of you. I would like to thank you very much. Um, the, the, I would like also to thank uh, the, the, the staff which is behind this webinar, uh, Susanna, Cassandra, Mila, and uh, I am very happy to have uh, been able to uh, organize this webinar together with Eva, uh, my friend forever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And okay, so I would like to announce that we will have other webinars from the Technology uh, Forum. Uh, we have a webinar very soon on uh, um, 3D printing, which will be very uh, informative too, with several experiences in 3D printing in pharmacy. And we will have also a, a webinar on uh, uh, digital developments uh, on hospital pharmacy which is co-organized with the hospital pharmacy section and also the webinar on Amazonification that I mentioned already, which, which is uh, together with the community pharmacy sections and other webinars which are still in the pipe on the pipeline. So thank you all of you. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope you will be there for future events of FIP you have got a link here. If you check the link, you will be aware of all, all what we are doing on FIP level. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye and thank you. Bye-bye and thank you too.